It is my pleasure to introduce today's Master of Ceremony. Mr. Max Queen is a lifelong Inca resident and has served on our Board of Education since 2014. Max, his lovely wife Janie, and their three children are all proud graduates of Inca District Public Schools. He spent 37 years in leadership positions at AB Technical Community College, including Dean of Allied Health and Public Service Programs and Vice President of Administrative Services. Additionally, he served as a paramedic for the Buncombe County EMS and is a lifetime firefighter and board member of the Inca Candler Fire and Rescue. So if anyone gets a little dizzy from all the heat, all this heat out here, Max is going to be your man. Please welcome today our Master of Ceremony, Mr. Max Queen. Well, if you noticed, we actually have the fire department representing us here today, and they may need to resuscitate me before this is over. <laughs> it's uh, quite a day in uh, the life and, uh, of Hominy Valley and of uh, the Inca School District. And I want to thank everyone for taking the time to be here to celebrate this event. Uh, our ribbon cutting ceremony here at the new Inca Intermediate School. For some of you, you'll remember the last time we assembled here was at our topping out ceremony, which signified the last steel beam being placed at the highest point of our building, that being the clock tower behind me. From these early beginnings and through the tireless work of our architects, builders, school maintenance, and technology personnel, we are assembled here once again to celebrate the finished product, our new Inca Intermediate School. Speaking on behalf of the Inca Candler community, we are grateful to the forward-thinking residents, school board members, our county commissioners who without their support none of this would have been possible. They shared our vision and recognized the invaluable resource this intermediate school will provide to our children. This school will relieve crowding in the middle school and all four elementary feeder schools in the district while also allowing space for the inevitable future growth. All right, at this point in time, I would like to introduce Ms. Ann Franklin, Chairperson of the Buncombe County Board of Education, for a word of welcome. What a wonderful group. Thank you so much for coming. Um, the board and the Board of Commissioners, we are so happy that we can provide this f facility of learning for our children. And what I would say to you as parents and as children, especially as teachers, is we provide the facility. The learning is up to you. And so go forth, have a wonderful year, and knock them dead. <laughs> Now I would ask that you please welcome me, or welcome, join me in welcoming our Buncombe County Superintendent, Dr. Tony Baldwin. This is one crazy cold spell we're having in August, isn't it? You know, I, I just can't help but thinking, I, I have an opportunity to attend uh, a number of ceremonies like this throughout my career, and so many of them, uh, so many of them are simply uh, arranged invitations, and you see public officials like myself, and that's it. What a fitting ceremony we have today, because when I look out, what I see I see public officials, we've recognized them, but more importantly, I see the Inca community. And I also, I've got eyes in the back of my head, and that's the smart part of the Inca community that's under the shade. But the, the reason that's so important for this school is, uh, of all schools, and I represent them all, this school was designed from the start to pay homage to the traditions, to the heritage that has made this community great. And that is so special. And I promise you parents that I'm not going to go through a history lesson. One of the famous natives 
of this district, Roger Metcalf, was unable to be here. So he gave me a few little bullet points about history that I will relate. But the true history lessons are going to take place inside this building. And as you walk through, you will see a number of cases, that glass cases, that hold memorabilia about this community. And barring from Roger's words, uh, and many of you out there may already know this, but the American Inca Company was established here in Hominy Valley by a contract with the city of Asheville on September 22, 1928 by a Dutch firm. And I am not going to embarrass myself or this community trying to pronounce the full name of, this, of the Dutch company. But what I will say to you is that historically, Inca, E-N-K-A, came out of the abbreviated pronunciation of that Dutch company. Inca would not be a consolidated community without the American Inca Company in the 20s. The name of Inca would not be in place if it wasn't associated with this Dutch company. America Inca came here during the Great Depression. And what they offered to this component of Western North Carolina was an opportunity for steady income, which was so rare in those days. But the thing I want to emphasize to you is that from the start, Again, the heritage, some of the bricks that you find in place inside this building go back to America Inca, who put first and foremost education for their employees, and not only employees, but the families of those employees. A school system here in Buncombe was expanded because of their uh, gracious support. They had a library inside the plant that housed over 2,000 books. Classes such as, and we, they may be coming back, shorthand, <laughs> literacy. Now we do have the literacy, balanced literacy in Buckham County Schools, but that was provided for classes for families in the Inca area. And eventually they actually supported a formal program of college education and provided scholarships to sons and daughters of employees. The board's willingness to display Inca memorabilia at the Inca Intermediate School, and some of you, I see some high school students and middle school students, when you walk in that school, those two schools, you're also going to see cases of that same memorabilia that's, that's there. Because we want you, it's so important, I say this as a parent, not a superintendent, that in today's environment, too often we lose sight of the traditions, the historical traditions, and the culture that have got us to here. And that will be a pledge that will be made from this school and the entire Inca District schools. So at this time, I would like to uh, introduce the next speaker. And that is Chairman Mr. David Gant. But we want to give you, this is a temporary plaque because our intent is there is a much, much more honorable plaque that is underway being made. We just didn't make it in time. It's the only thing I think we didn't make on time for this opening. <laughs> but that will be displayed inside the main office forever and ever. And it says, with appreciation to the Buncombe County Commissioners for their support of the Inca Intermediate School, dedicated on August 26, 2016. So on behalf of not only the Inca community, the Inca School District, but the Buncombe County School System, thank you. Thank you. Let's give it a hand. How about it? There are a lot of people out there that said, you'll never get another school in Inca after you built the middle school out there. But you know, you got a good school board, you got a good county commission, and the way this thing works is the county commission is the funding mechanism that does most of it. We're responsible for building the schools and making sure that the schools are good for the teachers, for the students, for the community. 
And it, this is my pleasure. This is the 11th school I've had the honor to open. And ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't always like that. 30 years ago, we were the other way. We actually made a list that you don't want to make. It's called the dilapidated dozen list, where we were in the 12 worst school districts as far as construction in the country, not just in the state. So what happened? You elected some good school board members. They had vision. You elected some county commissioners that understood that in education is the best investment that any community can make. And we built 21 schools. And so we're proud of that. We're proud of the Hominy Valley community. How many, uh, how many former Inca students are up there? Raise your hand. <coughs> And keep your hands up, how many teachers, former teachers, students and teachers, you got some overlap. Let's give these folks some hand because they had some, they had some challenges in the buildings they worked in. And as Dr. Baldwin said, this is a community rich in heritage. Notice the clock. You notice the rip, the, the kind of the, the way the, uh, the roof looks. And I want to thank uh, Max Queen for pushing hard to make sure that this school retained and has a sense of history because we don't have the plant working anymore. But as, um, as we're going to hear from Mr. White in a few minutes, that plant fed a lot of families. That plant made a real difference in this community and built it up. And we should all respect that and appreciate that even if we weren't directly affected by it. The whole future of Buncombe County depends on how well we do education. If we blow it, if we don't pay teachers the right salary and pay them for the professionals they are, we're failing. If we don't make sure that every kid here has an education that gives them an opportunity to find a good job after, ed after they're graduated, we failed. If we don't provide facilities where you have the best opportunity to learn and be educated, we failed. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to submit to you, we passed today. We got an A-plus here. What do you think? And your commission is going to continue to try to be A-plus. This is, this is my last hurrah on here, but you've got some great commissioners. You've got some great candidates. You're going to keep going the right way. And every year that I've been on the commission, and these folks have been on the commission, we voted to fund teacher supplements. And that's important because whatever the situation is in Raleigh, the local community also has a moral obligation to make sure teachers get paid what, they owe, what they're entitled to. We've got to make sure that we have the best people training our kids and making sure we give them up-to-date facilities and making sure that everybody has the best opportunity to succeed no matter what their level is. So we're going to keep doing that. You push the commissioners, whoever's on the commission, their job is to make sure you have these facilities, so you, you make sure your voice is heard. Are there any people from Equal Education for Inca here? That was a group that formed and said, we need a new school, and they, they pushed it. They had 400 members at one time. But thank your school board, thank your superintendent, thank your county commission, because at the end of the day, it comes down to money. And I'm proud to be part of this. I know all the commissioners that are here with us today are mighty proud. Mr. Belcher's got a grandson coming here. He's been here a lot trying to make sure things are done the right way. And we want you to succeed. We think you will. And what an honor to be here. Thank you for taking time out in this broiling sun and shade. <laughs> and it's an honor. Thank you. Have a great day. And let's, let's, uh, let's be successful. Thank you. Well, as been stated, this school is evidence of our county's commitment to the education of our children. To all the young people here today who will be starting school Monday morning, please know that family roots run deep in Hominy Valley. And our schools offer innumerable opportunities for education and a means for each of you to follow your road to success. I ask that you take a moment to consider that you all are first. You know, we just had the Olympics. Everybody wanted to be first and have a gold medal. Monday morning when you walk through that door, you're first. You're first in everything. 
You're setting the record book first, okay? And I want you to be proud of your school. I want you to claim ownership of your school. I want you to enjoy all it has to offer. And remember that someday, decades into the future, maybe your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren will be walking these same halls. A favorite quote of mine says that those who drink the water should remember those who dug the well. Now, if you think about that, I believe what that means is that we should all take a moment and reflect on our history and really how the past affects our lives. Earlier, Superintendent Baldwin mentioned the significance of American Inca settling in the Hominy Valley. Who would have thought that those people in the 1920s were making decisions that would ultimately impact us nearly a hundred years later? But they did. Change uh, gears a little bit and speak about the building and the architecture of the building. Uh, and it, I would like to introduce to you Miss Christy Holden. Christy, if you come on up. Uh, Christy is the business development director with Novus Architecture, and they are the uh, company that has been responsible for this building. In preparation for today, I went through multiple scenarios about what I would share with you at the culmination of such a great project. You know, should I um, bestow upon you all of the virtues of the architecture or possibly tell you tales of all of the antics that happened um, through the course of it. But ultimately, I've determined that it's really about the people. And you've heard it today. I mean, it's difficult to follow such great speakers because they've said it all. Um, but I would like to reiterate that the community residents, the Buncombe County School Board, facilities, IT, maintenance, the contractors, engineers, architects, all work together as a team. They grew, drew inspiration from the rich his history of this community. They discovered the educational needs of these students, and they explored contemporary te teaching environments. And here we are, standing before a school that addresses your culture because of the willingness of this community to share with us. A school that will attract skilled teachers and produce amazing students because of forward-thinking learning environments. Emily Kite is the project architect for this. She's unable to be here speaking to you today because of a family emergency, but she shared her thoughts with me. It is a rare opportunity to work with a team that consistently kept the ultimate goal in sight. We are privileged to be able to create a spectacular school for this deserving community. With the guidance of Tim Fearley, Buncombe County Schools, and the patriarch of Novus Architects, Mike Watson, we work together seamlessly with Hickory Construction, Wade Trim, Dewberry Engineers, Claysill Engineering, to get this school ready for students and teachers. We would like to thank the Buncombe County School Board and the County Commissioners for the opportunity to work on this project. And we wish the students faculty, and administration a fantastic school year. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce to you Ms. Mr. Mark Balcom. He is the president of Hickory Construction. And uh, just a point of privilege for a moment, Mark. Uh, I've been involved through the course of this. I've been to several of the construction meetings. And uh, these folks have done an absolutely remarkable job. They were always on point. They knew what needed to be done and how to get it done. And uh, I think uh, for the county commissioners, uh, uh, you would have to agree that to deliver a building on time and on budget is something remarkable in today's marketplace. <laughs> so Mark, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for those kind words. I left my coat on, so we'll, we'll be brief. I'm hotter <laughs> than you are. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be involved in such a high-profile project as has been talked about today about Inca. Uh, when we got selected and to be out here for the better part of two years, I don't think, we, we've been in business 75 years. We built over close to 5 million square feet of K-12 through schools. And I can honestly say this is probably one of the prettiest jobs we've ever built. It's probably one of the most supportive communities all of you we've ever worked with. And it's been beyond an honor and a privilege to, be, to look back and see all these children walk in and realize that we were part 
of something that's going to impact many generations. So thank you to everybody and for the confidence in our company. Thank you. So far we've talked a lot about the history of Inca and the building of the school. Now I want to bring us to the present and uh, to provide insight into the future of Inca in in Intermediate School is Miss uh, Carlene Finger, Inca Intermediate's new principal. This building is here because of a community that cares about its children. The Inca students deserve the best education that we can give them and we are grateful for this beautiful school where we can take them one step further toward success. I want to acknowledge and express appreciation on behalf of the EIS students and staff for the tremendous love, support, and encouragement you have given to us through this process of starting a new school. Thank you to local businesses, to our churches, and faith-based organizations, to the non profit groups and to our neighborhood associations. Also, thank you to individual neighbors themselves who have re reached out to us with care and with love. We will always remember your kindness and will always be grateful. Last, I want to acknowledge our staff of EIS and ask them to stand. I am proud to have each of them standing by me on this historic day for this momentous event. They have stepped away from the security and familiarity of the great schools they are coming from, and I am proud to have each one of them on this journey. They are an amazing group of people who are joining hands and hearts on a mission to have a positive impact on every student who walks through these doors. We are Inca. We are proud. So fasten your seatbelts because these jets are getting ready to fly. I am Inca. I choose to be the best. Empathy, integrity, self-control, jets.